sure you're all trying to figure out what in the world is going on in the spirit. Uh, number one, hell hates this church. And uh, this isn't just about Joshua. So we're not going to make it just about Carrie's husband or our son. So I've had people call and ask me, they say, have you heard, has the Lord given your word? He has. The Bible says we have a more sure word of prophecy, the written word of the Lord. And the word says, if any two agree on anything, and he doesn't qualify it, except for certain things. He says, if any two agree on any one thing or anything, it shall be done. We're an unusual church. I'm an unusual preacher. There's probably been nobody in the earth that has declared more war on hell in the last two or three years than I have. And so... We would have to be a moron to think that the enemy is not going to challenge us because of what we're speaking. This church is a God portal. And we are right now in a dimension to where either hell can shut it or God can open it. It's an amazing church. We have amazing members online. I can't, I want to say thank you to all of you online that watch, that have sent wonderful letters and encouragement and all of that. Many of you and us have went through similar things. But the Bible says, be thanks be unto God who giveth us or always causes us to triumph through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, at the renewal, when I released the prophetic word of the Lord, part of what God said was this. He said, I'm going to begin to judge the wicked. And he said, at the beginning, it's going to look very dark for the righteous. And then he said, I'm going to turn it. And I'm going to fulfill what I have said. So most of the church today in America has a difficulty with faith. We can talk about it, but real faith is not what you say, it's what you live. Most of faith that has been taught in America for the last 20 years has been centered around money and prosperity. It's not about other things. It always comes back to sow a seed. And and somehow it always comes back to just one or two people get the benefits of the seed that's sown. What God is trying to do in this hour is to release a realm or a dimension of faith that we walk in that will usher in this last great move of the Lord. And so I, I want to, I'm not sure where we're going to go with this today, but I'm, I'm going to start out out of the book of 1 Samuel, and we're going to read uh, a portion of the chapter that's here, 1 Samuel chapter 30, and uh, hopefully God will, will give us some understanding of what we're doing. Um, I've had people say, well, you know, you just, we're just praying the will of God. We've had people tell us that we need to just accept the will of the Lord. And, you know, it's God needs, you ever hear this? God needs them in heaven more than you need them on earth. You know what that is? That's unbelief. It's a justification for unbelief. Remember this. It is never the will of God. Never the will of God for a believer to leave the earth before their time. When you come to our prayer meetings that we have at the church and we have on the television monitors, uh, we have Josh, we've 
taken several place excerpts of where he has taught on communion. Hell hates Joshua because he teaches so much about faith and healing. And so it is the will of God. You have to get that in your spirit. Not just about him, but it's the will of God for you to be blessed. It's the will of God for you to prosper. It's never the will of God for the devourer to be loose in your life. And Carrie quoted the verse that you have the power of death and life in your tongue. But it's not just what comes out of your mouth. It's what comes out of your heart. Faith comes out of the heart. It is a belief system. It's not just a declaration. 1 Samuel chapter 30 is the story of David. And it came to pass when David and his men came to Ziglag on the third day. Because this was David's city that had been given to him by the king of Gath. The Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag, and they smitten Ziglag, and they burned it with fire. And they had taken the women captive that were therein, and they slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. I want to stop for a moment and and bring this point out. The Bible says that Jesus came from the seed of David. There could be no seed of David if there was no women. And when the enemy came and they smit Ziglag, they stole the women, didn't kill them, but they were after ultimately Christ. Because if you get rid of the women, then David, his wives, then he can have no seed that produces Jesus Christ. Because Jesus came from the bloodline. Sometimes the enemy comes after you, not just for what you have at the moment, but for what you're going to release in the future. You have to be, this is why the Bible says you got to be smarter than the devil, wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. But you have to have understanding of what God's doing. You will never stand in the trial if you do not have a relationship that is fresh with the Lord Jesus Christ. When the enemy cometh in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord raises up a war flag. That's what it means, a war flag against it. Hell has declared war. Well, we declare war in the name of the Lord Jesus. We are not of those that draw back. We will not will. We will not roll over. We will not shut our mouths. We will not say it doesn't work. We will not say there is no God. We will not shut the doors and retire. Who are we? We are the children of the Most High God. And we will make hell pay for what he is doing in the earth. Not just to Josh, but to our sons, our daughters, our purpose, our future by the name of the Lord. And David and his men, verse 3, came to the city. Behold, it was burned with fire. Their wives, their sons, their daughters were taken captive. And David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and they wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captive, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons, his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. What are you going to do when the enemy tries to steal from you? This story would not end the way you're going to hear it end if it was left up to the people that were with David. Thank God, hallelujah, for one man in this story 
that would not give in and weep with the rest of them. But the Bible said <clears throat> he encouraged himself in the Lord. How did he do that? It says, and David said to Abathar the priest and Ahimelech son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abathar brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him and said, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. Verse 17, And David smote them from twilight even unto the evening of the next day. 24 hours. He kicked their butts all over the place. And there escaped not a man of them, say 400 young men which rode on camels, and they fled. Verse 18, David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away, and David rescued his two wives. And there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all. No wonder the Bible says in the last days, what I'm going to raise up is the tabernacle of David. Verse 20, and David took all the flocks and the herds which they had drave out before those other cattle and said, this is David's spoil. The battle that we are in right now, and it's, and it's not just here, it's across the earth. If we really understood the tremendous attack that is on believers around the world, we would be probably moved to pray all the time. And so the enemy is trying to take from the body of Christ the best that we have and leave us until there's no more power to weep. This is not a night season. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You say, then how do we get through this? The joy of the Lord is our strength. You say, well, does that really work? Go back. Jesus despised the cross. Hallelujah. And he hated the shame. And he did it for the joy that was set before him. What the enemy does when you go through the battle is he makes you get so close up to the problem that you cannot see Jesus on the other side. And so in prayer, when you step back, David said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. What does that mean? It means that in the midst of where it looks impossible, all of a sudden your praise begins to magnify God and greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We are not just here for numbers. We're not just here for a prophetic conference. But God raised us up to pull down the strongholds of hell for the next three years that we are to lose the greatest outpouring of the glory of God. For this next move of the Lord that has already been released out of heaven in the earth is not just going to be one part of but God said since the last Azusa outpouring, uh, there have been many discrepancies or, or many displays uh, of the power of God. Uh, but the Lord said this time, uh, I'm going to take every move that has been, uh, and at one time I'm going to loose it in the house of the Lord. Uh, one moment you'll laugh. Uh, another moment you'll see glory. Uh, another moment, hallelujah, the oil 
oil of the glory of God will be released. Another moment, saith God, there will be a shout in the midnight hour. Another moment, the dead shall rise. Another moment, the eyes of the blind shall be opened. I did not raise you up, saith the Lord, to have the enemy bury you, but I raised you up because you are strong and know your God. Hold on to your place. Hold on to your shout. Do not let hell silence you, saith God. Now, I read to you that story because in First Chronicles chapter 26, in verse 26, it says, When Shalmoth and his brothers, or brethren, were over all the treasures of the dedicated things which David the king, the chief fathers, the captain over thousands and hundreds, captains of the host had dedicated out of the spoils won in battle did they dedicate to maintain the house of the Lord if you go I think it's in the 22nd chapter of Chronicles it talks about that David, for years, had stored up all kinds of things so his son Solomon could build the house of the Lord. He had accumulated jewels and timber and fabrics and stone. And the masons had hewn out things. And when Solomon got ready to build the house, the Bible said that he built it out of the things that David had accumulated over his lifetime. But one of the last things that David did before he died was the Bible said that out of the spoils of the battle. David had personally accumulated spoils from the battles that he had fought. And they were not put with the other provision to build the house. David said, these spoils are not to build the house, but he said, they are to maintain the house. The scripture is very plain, at least three times in the New Testament, it says this, that you and I are the house of the Lord. As long as we live, you and I are going to have conflict with the enemy. Things that are used consistently have to from time to time be repaired in order to continue to function for which they were built. Anything, the home that I live in is, I don't know, 51 years old. It's a good house, but it's a good house because over the years I have continually made repairs I've replaced the roof, I've replaced the skylights, I've replaced the heat pump, I've replaced the floors, I've replaced all the plumbing, I've replaced all of the windows, I have painted the entire house, I have done landscaping, I have put in drains because the basement flooded, we have put in new sheetrock, we refurbished every bathroom in that house. It looks good, but you know why it does? It's because I use accumulation over the years of the blessing of God to make that house maintain by repairing it. The battles that you and I fight, God allows us to get involved in them because anything that is never repaired 
eventually falls into decay and disrepair and no longer is good for anything. So God, hallelujah, will let you enter into battles with the enemy because in those battles when you come out, you just don't come out with what you went in with, but you come out with spoil. And those spoils, hallelujah, are what you use to maintain your faith and your walk with God. Yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Through many tribulations do we enter into the kingdom of God. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Your shout and your victory today is not just about now, but it's about the past battles that you've been in. That when you came out of them, you came out with a spoil and you took from the enemy what was his best stuff and put it in your own house. This is what spoil means. Plunder. Loot, booty of war, and purpose. God does not want you coming out of battle just a survivor. But he wants you to come out a victor. Survivors come out with nothing but their life. Victors come out with the enemy's best and David understood the principle that the battles that you and I go through we don't just come out of them alive but we come out with things that allow us to repair the house, to add on to the house, to make the house more beautiful, hallelujah, and much more effective. So what we're going through right now is either the, the enemy is trying to spoil us. I told someone, I said, and never saw this one coming. But he will come in in a moment that you didn't see it. This is why you got to be instant in season and out of season. So when I walk in and, and I see Josh, he's on life support system, and, and, they, and, and they brought me and, and um, Carrie in and showed his picture of his brain, and he said, you know, he's brain dead, and you need to get ready to turn off the machine and, and all of that. That's the enemy. People say, well, you know, these things happen. Believers have authority. <laughs> Hallelujah. As long as you and I are alive, we have to declare faith. You say, but what if you declare it and it doesn't happen? So be it. But you've heard me say this. I would rather go down with faith in my mouth. Hallelujah. That unbelief and making a treaty with the enemy. Somewhere. Now listen, in other countries it happens, but it didn't happen in the United States hardly. Somewhere in the United States of America, God has to have a church that raises the dead, that heals the sick, that opens the eyes of the blind, that will look the devil in the eye and say, uh-uh, not here, hallelujah. Behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means can hurt you or harm you. So when the enemy charges us, we stand on the word of the Lord. God can not lie. I can preach like this because of the spoils from past battles. I watched 
Josh being rushed to an ambulance when he was eight years old because he fell off a cliff and he was already blue when they found him. And a hiker found him and did CPR and brought him back to life. So he, I watched God bring him back from that place. I watched God resurrect him from the dead of homosexuality. Jesus said this. He said, which is easier, to say thy sins be forgiven thee or take up thy bed and walk? Which is easier, delivering from homosexuality or speaking to his body life? The early church <clears throat> had a harder time believing in spiritual healing than they did in physical healing. The church today believes in spiritual healing but has a hard time believing in physical healing. <clears throat> so what we're doing right now, we have to go and spoil the enemy. In Ephesians, I think it's chapter 4 and verse 4, it says this. <clears throat> now, he that ascended far above the heavens. Of course, we know that the heavens is where the enemy is. The Bible says he's the prince and the power of the air. So when Jesus was resurrected, he ascended right through the devil's domain. And went into heaven and sat down on the right hand of the Father. And he rules and reigns today. And he ever liveth to make intercession for you and I. But it says, though he ascended into heaven, yet first he descended into the lower parts of the earth. And what did he do? It says, he led captivity captive. And he brought them up into heaven. Colossians, I think it's chapter 1, maybe verse 15, ties in with this. It says that he spoiled principalities and powers. The word principalities literally means head rulers. He spoiled them, principalities and powers, and made a show of them openly. When did he do this? He did it when it looked like the devil had won. Jesus is laying in a grave in the natural. But his spirit, hallelujah, descended into hell. And he looked at the devil and he said, I am spoiling your kingdom. And he began to say, I'll take that. I'll take Elijah, I'll take David, I'll take Ezekiel, I'll take Rahab, I'll take all of these men and women. What was he doing? He was taking the best that the enemy had. He gutted hell that day when he spoiled them. And then he began to walk out while the enemy stood and watched. There has to be a release of the power and of the glory of God. I I'm thankful when we sing, uh, do you, you need to come to the river. And it was cold, but God moved my spirit. I like to sing rattle. I like to sing he lives, uh, but I would rather show it to you. Hallelujah. Somewhere we got to get beyond just the song. Somewhere we got to get beyond just reading the book. Somewhere we got to be the living authority of the power of God. Uh, that when the dead come, uh, we raise them by the power of the Lord. I lose the glory of God in this building across the earth right now from Russia to China to India. I lose the apostolic spirit of Elijah up into the atmosphere. We bind the Jezebel demons of hell that are coming against the people of God and we declare we spoil you. We spoil you by the power of the Lord.
conflicts are absolutely necessary to prevent breakdowns. You can buy a brand new car if you don't ever drive it and you stick it in a garage, it will seize up, the tires will rot, squirrels get in there and eat the hoses, the spark plug wires. Why? Because it was never used. When you become a believer, I really think that probably if Josh and Carrie did not have the proclamation that they had, Josh would be here right now on platform. You better make sure when you go after the devil that you got Jesus behind you. Yarababa Sunday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When, how many saw the Wednesday podcast on Binding and Lucy? How many realized that that's a principle? When you bind something in the earth and then it obligates God to bind it in heaven, all right? Why? Because when you bind in the earth, you're now coming into agreement with God. And when God binds it in heaven, he comes into agreement with you. So now heaven and earth converge in agreement in heavenly places where the devil reigns. And when God and I or you come together in the devil's domain, we spoil the enemy in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> when God releases prophetic words, as he has over the last few years in this nation, this was not just to excite people or to draw crowds. This was the word of the Lord being released. What was he doing? He said, I'm saying this so that you will come into agreement with me by declaring it in the earth. See, sometimes God says, I am loosing things in heaven, and now I need you to loose them in the earth. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. It is finished. There is nothing left for God to do. He said, I now do delegate to you by the Spirit of the Lord. This strong man, I bind it in the name of Jesus. Even this week, hallelujah, saith the Lord, my hand shall be unveiled, not only in this church, but in the earth. There is a shaking, saith God, for I have declared that for the next three years, the harvest is going to be loose in the atmosphere of the earth. In every nation, saith the Lord, my glory is going to begin to be seen. The wicked are going to begin to die and the righteous are going to begin to shout. It does not matter what man says, saith the Lord. I am not bound by the rhetoric or the decrees of men. Every demon, saith the Lord, is under my feet and I do not quiver at the roaring of the lion. That is an imposter, for I am the lion of Judah. So this day, saith the Lord, upon this nation this is here it's not coming it is here saith the Lord prepare yourselves for you have stepped in to the Red Sea that is parted and in the midst of this glory saith God I am going to cause your enemy to be destroyed in the very fact of the deliverance that I gave to you I bind every Jezebel demon in the name of God the Lord says I've saved the Elijah anointing for such a time as this. I loose it upon you. Miracles saith God are going to be everyday occurrences because of my purpose that is released in the earth saith the Lord.
even declarations in prayer, saith God, that you prayed 10, 15 years ago that you have forgotten. I am going to answer them now. And you will say, oh my, I forgot that I prayed that. Look what the Lord has done. For there has been a blanket of heaviness. It is a demon spirit that has gotten nuts down on this nation, upon the nations around the world. It is purposed to steal the praise and the sound of joy that I had loosed upon the earth. But there is another sound coming, saith God. Did I not say there is the tabernacle of David which is praise that is being loosed in the atmosphere so what the enemy has done to us we do to him this day we stomp the head of the devil though you have bruised our heel we now break your head in the name of Jesus may there be a spirit of revelation and understanding to begin to be loosed upon you may there be an authority I loose it upon you online around the world I loose a release. I open the God portals by the Spirit of God. Save the Lord. Spoil. Spoil your enemy. Do not be content to be a survivor. Be a conqueror. For we, hallelujah, even more than conquerors through Christ who has set us free. Go ahead, hallelujah. Hayara mama mama Sunday. God had me prophesy in Florida. And part of what he said, I'm coming against the spirit of infirmity that's in the nations. And I'm going to empty out hospitals. And now the enemy has put my son in Carrie's husband in the hospital so in the name of the Lord hallelujah not only do we declare that Josh is going to come out we declare that in that ward where I see all those other people that are in comas that when Joshua comes out in the name of the Lord that other victims other men and women all over Skyline Hospital that the enemy says we've got you I spoil Skyline Hospital in the name of the Lord I'm thankful for him but we spoil this is not status quo this is not how it's always been this is a new day saith the Lord and I waited until I found a body of believers called Regeneration Nashville that would step up to the plate and say we believe and because you have declared we believe I now loose the best that I have upon you by the power of God and to show it saith the Lord I bind every sickness in this building right now in the name of the Lord and I loose the apostolic anointing of the power of God healed, 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 healed miracles, miracles, miracles even above others, the online members miracles, miracles, miracles into your home, into your nation, into the atmosphere by the Spirit of the Lord. We do not bow down. Hallelujah. We do not bow down, but we declare the word of the Lord. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Neither death. The stories that we like to talk about the most in the Bible were the ones that were so close in the impossible. The church in the earth is looking at a Red Sea, a fiery furnace, a lion's den, a Goliath. What do we do? 
do we say, my God is more than able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Hallelujah. Jennifer, that means over Tim. Sunday. Hallelujah. Spoil. I want you to begin to think about some things that have seemed impossible that in your life. And I want you to begin to declare in the name of the Lord, I am spoiling you devil. And I'm taking back. Hallelujah. And I'm not just taking mine back, but I'm taking the best that you have. And we are bringing it into the house of the Lord. Why? Because we are building up the kingdom of the Lord. We are building up the house of God. Spoil. I did not realize Joshua's or uh, Nicholas's word was about spoil. And I knew what I was going to preach. We are in a season. Hallelujah. Hear me. The only way you can spoil your enemy is to engage him in battle. He ain't coming and giving it to you. The kingdom of God permits violence and the violent taketh it by force. When Josh, I've been telling the Lord for the, in the first Sunday of February, uh, by faith I am declaring that he does communion in this house. <clears throat> We do not believe what we see. I do not believe what I see when I walk in that room and I lay hands on him. I see, hallelujah, what we believe. <clears throat> now, do not let this become a distraction. Do not let the devil make this the focus of whether God exists or he doesn't. You just have to stand on faith. You have to stand in faith. I can truthfully say this, that every dark valley and the shadow of death that I've walked through, when I emerged, I always had more than when I went in. Many of you can say the same thing. I told my wife, <clears throat> I said, the Bible does not say, yea, do I walk through the valley and death. It says, the shadow. Shadow is not real. It means there's something close that is real. And I now understand why for the last two months my chest hurt. I told you, I said, oh, it's not physical. I'm not having physical chest issues. But I was warring in the spirit because I was sensing something in the atmosphere. God does not let you and I know about things like that unless he's preparing us for victory. There is the miraculous in this building today. How many of you need some kind of miracle in your life? It can be just whatever insurmountable. Those of you that are watching online and in other countries, you're part of this church. There is a river of gladness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a river of gladness that flows from Emmanuel's veins. Praise God. Can you lead this in that while we stand? Put, yeah, on, there is a river of gladness that flows.
Thank you.